whenever I knew she was going out anywhere, whether it just be clubbing down the road, it was always to stay safe, have a good time, dance and come home. Ecstasy deaths have quadrupled in the last five years. This year so far, at least 10 young women have died after taking ecstasy, compared to four last year. We can't be sure what's inside them, but this is what the drug looks like. And the strength of pills has never been higher. Consistently over the last two or three years, young women under the age of 21 are two to three times more likely than men to seek treatment. Hi Michelle, Hi. how are you doing? I'm fine. Michelle's daughter Stephanie died in June. She was so excited to be going to this new rave because they only ever go to maybe one or two a year if that. It was always just stay safe, come home and don't be stupid. Don't do nothing stupid. Can you tell me how you found out what had happened? I got a phone call about 10 to 1. It was a nurse on the end of the line. I just said, can you tell me if it's serious? She did say, we're working on it at the moment. They're working on her heart. Unfortunately, they couldn't save her. I was just all of us in disbelief. Just, it hasn't happened. I'm going to wait for her to walk in the door. You said Steph was really excited about this rave. I guess she'd been to stuff like that before. Did you know that she'd taken drugs before? I didn't know 100%, but I, I had the feeling. They go there to, to get high. They go to go and have a good time and dance and not do any harm. Every weekend in the UK, half a million people are taking ecstasy. But death is very rare. Guys, have your IDs out ready, please! The Warehouse Project in Manchester hosts 2,000 people every Friday and Saturday night for three months of the year. Any promoter or any venue owner or any festival organiser that says that there isn't drugs inside the venue, they're a liar. Have you seen a change in the kind of stuff that you've had coming through here? We've seen, definitely, I'd say over the last two years specifically, the strength of tablets has increased four or five times what it used to be. Now if they take three, four or five tablets, they're only going to go home one way and that's in the back of an ambulance, if not worse. How much do you know about medically what happened to Steph? I think it was a little Lego man they had and then the effects didn't take. So they all went back in and decided to take the other half. And it, it must have worked because when we got to the hospital you could clearly see that one of the girls was still hired case. And it wasn't, wasn't nice at all to see. Did they tell you, apart from the amount that was in her system, did they tell you what happened to her body? Like all, that, all that I know is the night it happened is just if that's a substantial amount of water in her body. Women are more likely to suffer this kind of reaction. Adam Winstock from the Global Drug Survey has been examining the data on young women and pills. Do you think that there's a difference in the way that females and males respond to ecstasy? Yes, absolutely. Women are much less likely to buy their own drugs, so they perhaps don't know what they're taking or they're taking pills or powders given to them on trust from men they may or may not know. Women are much more likely to end up in emergency medical treatment than men, at least two to threefold. That's not related to body weight. And that the sorts of things that women present with when they turn up to the emergency department are different to men. So if women are more susceptible to the negative effects but it's not related to their body weight then what is it so one thing you've got to look at is possibly hormones ecstasy makes your body hold on to water this can be dangerous when it leads to something called hyponatremia the excess water in your system makes your cells swell which can cause massive damage in the brain cells have pumps on them which can reduce the swelling but oestrogen makes these pumps work less well, meaning women are more likely to run into problems from hyponatremia. One of the things that probably places people at risk of dehydration and overheating is having too much MDMA hit their brain at once. Why is it that pills now contain so much more MDMA than they used to? So there's new precursors, um, which are the chemicals you need to make MDMA, so it's easier to make. And manufacturers who are coming in to the marketplace 
kind of want to have a flagship product that's saying, we are here, here is our 330 milligram pill. And it's really unfortunate that manufacturers want to enter the marketplace with a product that's actually quite dangerous. For uh, deze levensgevaarlijke ecstasy pill waarschuwt het Trimbos Instituut. We zijn in binnen en buitenland al enkele mensen aan overleden. Het Trimbos Instituut adviseert om deze pillen niet te gebruiken. The Trimbos Institute in Holland monitors the country's drug market and releases warnings to the public when they find out about worrying substances. Speed, methamphetamine, MDA, we have a lot of them. MDEA, heroin. This is caffeine-free coffee. <laughs> a lot of people in the UK would be horrified, I think, at the idea of having bulletins on the primetime news about class A drugs. What would you say to the argument that it's encouraging people to take drugs? If you compare to other countries, we have a quite a low number of drugs-related deaths. The way we do our warnings, it was all over the media, so it was very hard to miss this specific warning. And as a result, people don't buy this substance. Why would you buy a pill which is potentially lethal? So in the end, you know, less people die of drugs. Trimbos runs drop-in centres all over Holland. Drug takers can anonymously get their pills tested to check their strength before they take them. Als je het gaat gebruiken, waar ga je het dan gebruiken? Op een feestje? Thuis? Um, waarschijnlijk thuis. What type of people come here to get their drugs tested? People will go to parties, people will use it at home. Um, hippies, students, uh, swingers, I don't know if they have it in England, but people will have sex with other couples. Yeah. It, it, all kind of people, yes. Hij kleurt in ieder geval blauw-zwart. Dus dat betekent dat er MDMA of een MDMA-achtig stof in zit. And this is in part funded by the government, but you know, these people are still doing something illegal. How are they protected? It's safe. They're not um, uh, getting arrested for coming here. No. The government is okay with uh, the testing facilities because we know what's on the market. We can warn if there's something a lot worse than the regular drugs. Less than two weeks after this was on the news in Holland, this was on the news in the UK. A man is being treated that police feared may not survive. Brought here critically ill after taking ecstasy similar to this red tablet with its Superman logo. The Warehouse Project is the only place in the UK that runs on-site drug monitoring. Fiona Misham and her team test confiscated drugs and warn clubbers about high-risk pills. We've got cannabis, we've got ecstasy tablets and we've got various white powders. The first thing we're going to do is crush up this pill here and then it will provide the unique footprint for that particular pill. This particular tablet has 220 milligrams of MDMA. 220, that's... That's very high. That will be a concern because the average dose for an adult is about 70 to 100 milligrams. Oh, wow. If you took two of these, if you double dropped, it could be potentially lethal. We would want to put out a warning about this for people to be careful about these pills that are circulating on site. What message do you think that drug users in this country are getting from the government? Drugs are bad, drugs are dangerous, and there's no safe way for you to use them, and we ban drugs because they're bad for your own good. Order. We now come to backbench business, beginning with the motion on UK drugs policy. I think the barrier is it's not enough of an important political issue that's going to either win or lose an election. The day it is the tipping point for a party, that's where I think you'll see it get its way onto the ballot paper. I think out of a tragedy, a lesson should be learned, and there's no point demonising this thing because it's here to stay. I won't be here in a hundred years time but drugs will almost definitely be here in a hundred years time that's something I can guarantee. <laughs>